Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, the dealership for Vespa and Piaggio scooters here in San Diego, California. Today I'm going to do a review of the Piaggio BV350, or in many parts of the world, the Beverly 350, and share all the quirks and the cool stuff about it and why I think it's the perfect large displacement scooter. So this is a new 2020 BV350 here in the United States in this new flat blue color. Last year they had a flat green, which was a popular cool looking color as well. They've had black and some other, the standard colors that have been carried through for several years. Starting in 2015, they included ABS and traction control with this scooter. The first two year models, 2013 and 2014, did not have traction control. And they also had a couple teething problems that I'll discuss a little further down in the video. Let me get into why it's my favorite larger displacement scooter. Scooters in general, my favorite are Vespas, of course, but if I have to ride a scooter that's a tool for commuting on the highways here in San Diego, California, this is my choice. And it's been my choice since 2014, and I just got a new BV350 that I'll share with you in another video. So starting out, why I like this scooter. It's got the larger wheels, but still has a very compact size. Weighs in at 395 pounds, which is like 180, 179 kilos, something, something like that. Can't do the math in my top of my head. So it's a little bit heavier than the Vespa GTS 300, but it's so much more of a capable highway cruiser with the larger tires, which is a 16 inch in the front, which carries over from all the prior years of the, the BV or Beverly range big wheel scooters that Piaggio has been making for, I don't know, quite some time. Talking about the 350 and the rear is a 150-70-14, which is a nice wide size tire. The motor on this scooter is unique. Um, in the United States, it's the only scooter that has this 330 cc engine. They call it a 350, but technically it's a 330. Uh, Overall, it's a very good engine. Early on, they did have some teething problems. They tended to have uh, coolant leaks and had spark plug caps that arc out, a couple other issues. But with the new ones, I have plenty of customers that rack up tons of miles on them. They're quite durable. They've kind of worked out some of the kinks. My prior BV350 that you've seen in like maybe two videos prior in the silver finish, it's had a handful of little issues that I've had to fix over the lifespan that I used it. Uh, now it's on to a new owner that's pretty happy with the scooter, so glad to pass it on with all the service I've done to it, and I'm excited to have a new one. So with the larger tires, the, the larger engine, which is capable of about 90 miles an hour, a little faster if you really want to crank it, but they certainly can get into fast you know, the left-hand lanes on the freeway without issue, which is very nice. Um, GTS 300, it may be freeway capable, but I've never considered it to be a scooter that you comfortably want to take in the fast lanes here in California. If you drive in California, you know everybody goes like 80 miles an hour in the left-hand lanes, even when it's posted 55. Highway Patrol just doesn't care. And if it's a scooter, it's kind of like invisible. I've never gotten a speeding ticket on a scooter. I've gotten them on motorcycles and cars, but not on a scooter. And I drive like a bat out of hell sometimes on the scooters, especially. Uh, the nice thing about the 2015 and later with the ABS and traction control, those are nice safety features. I can tell you on my 2013 down in Mexico, went through a muddy intersection and I was fishtailing the thing like crazy, trying to hang on and keep, keep the rubber side down. Um, with traction control, it could have prevented that. I'm not, I won't say that the traction control systems on these are perfect, but I do believe it could prevent an accident or a panic brake situation, especially on these larger scooters. You may wanna have that. So overall, I mean, the price goes up quite a bit on the used market and obviously with the new one, being at $65.99, still a bargain compared to a Vespa GTS for what you get on this. But uh, 2013, 2014, they tend to go for much lower prices because they have 
a little bit of a wrap for some issues and no ABS system on it. Uh, one of the good things about this scooter, 6,000 mile service intervals. Uh, so they go 6,000 miles, you gotta change the oil. I've covered all the services. Every 12,000 miles, you're supposed to do the dry belt. I'd recommend doing it a little bit sooner if you ride it hard. Every 24,000 miles, you wanna check the valve. So the service intervals are spread out. So that saves you money, along with the larger size tires, which I can attest they last two to three times longer than the tires on a Vespa GTS 300, especially if you're using it on the highway. The tires last quite a long time. Obviously, if you ride it hard and you're always getting on the throttle hard, you're gonna wear out tires faster. If you're in hot climate, it's gonna wear out tires faster. Uh, your mileage may vary. As for the fuel economy of this scooter, uh, Piaggio claims around 65 miles per gallon. I do believe that if you ride it pretty easily and aren't blasting it down the highway all the time, maybe a constant 60, 65 miles an hour, I totally believe it will get that kind of mileage. Uh, they do post the fuel tank capacity at 3.4 gallons. I do not believe that because I've run out and put exactly three gallons of gas in there. So that kind of gives you the mileage range. It's pretty much safe for 150 miles. Uh, my mileage on my current BV that has a pipe on it and a variator is around 55 miles a gallon. My prior BV was averaging about 58. So obviously it goes down a little bit if you're gonna um, tweak with the thing and add performance parts. That's just kind of part of it. Um, wrote them about the same. What's included with the 6599, you get this short uh, windscreen. Some people love it, some people hate it. I will admit at 5'7", about my height, it does kind of have a lot of turbulence. In the summertime, I prefer just to run with it out. Uh, when the scooters are new, they include a cap that covers the center mount and it's pretty easy to remove this wind, windscreen on here. Uh, you could get the air, the kind of um, fresh air, you know, in the summertime. And then when it comes to winter, I just put the big tall sails, much as I hate those things that you look through them, but keeps the cold, cold weather off you. I shouldn't be a crybaby. I'm in San Diego, it doesn't get that cold here, but uh, I ride at night. Sometimes it drops down. I like the extra comfort. So like I stated, this scooter fits me pretty good. I'm 5'7". Uh, I can easily flat foot this scooter, no problems. I uh, can whip it around the turns. The lean angle's uh, quite generous on the scooter compared to a lot of the, uh, the Barca Lounge style scooters, not criticizing those scooters, but Bergman's, any of the longer kind of uh, lower slung scooters, they usually have limited ground clearance. These things you can whip around pretty good. There are some limitations to the suspension. Uh, I'm used to really nice motorcycles with really good suspension. Uh, you get on this and um, the suspension uh, pretty much says 6599 all over it. Um, not the best front forks. Uh, they're pretty rigid, but they're not the most complimenting to a sporty ride or even just hitting little expansion grooves that kind of bounce you around. Uh, handles better overall than a GTS in many situations. Just other situations I find the Vespas handle better, especially in the tighter turns, being a shorter wheelbase, smaller tires. I prefer that for those kind of roads, but on the highway is where I judge the performance of the scooter. Overall, I think it's great. Motors along the highway is just dandy. Um, I was ready to buy a 2020 GTS this year. I uh, decided I do like all the improvements, but there's not enough improvements to justify uh, replacing the current GTS I have. And I've had three, three, four, no, four GTSs over all the years, you know, since 2000 something. Um, for the BV350, this is my second one, it's kind of same bike. Same fuel, same everything. The new one obviously feels tighter uh, and I'm pretty stoked it's got the ABS brakes and traction control. So if you're looking to use a scooter for two-up two riding or touring, it does include fold-out uh, passenger foot pegs, both left and right side. The passenger does sit higher. Um, they can grab onto the grab rail, but I'd recommend that they hold on to the rider. That's typically how a passenger sh should ride. Uh, one thing is if you buy any of the factory top cases, they do include a backrest pad for the passenger. So keep that in mind, it may be a good option. Even if you don't think you need the storage or don't like the looks, it's a good backrest if you're gonna use the scooter two up. 
As for features of the scooter, let's power it up and show you the dash and what's included. So pretty basic instrumentation. You got a fuel gauge with a fuel light. Uh, the, the blinking lights are just the self-test mode of the ABS and traction control system. This button right here turns off the traction control system, which is useful if you want to get all the speed you can, because I noticed the traction control system does slow them down a little bit, or um, you're riding it in uh, sand or something soft where you do not want a traction control system on and it will impede with the uh, ability to move forward, such as a flat tire, reasons like that. It's got oil pressure, a temp temperature gauge, which has been missing from the Vespa GTS ever since 2015. Um, you got a multifunction odometer. It's got the battery voltage. I don't know if that's all that useful. Outside temperature, you can see it's pretty warm today here in San Diego. It's not quite that hot in the building, but it was parked outside, so it's kind of heat soaked. Total uh, mileage and two trip odometers. And if you hold the mode switch, it resets the trip odometer. Um, also has a service indicator, uh, comes on at the first service, which is around 625 miles, 1,000 kilometers. And then thereafter, every 6,200 miles. So every service thereafter, around 6,000 miles, 10,000 kilometers. Uh, as you can see, the speedometer's uh, main uh, scale is in kilometers. Doesn't bug me, because I just know in the back of my mind, uh, 120 kilometers, 75 miles an hour, 110, 70, 80s, 50. You know, I just remember to have so many um, European vehicles that have kilometer speedos. It's just natural to me. Uh, some people, they may dislike that that's the majority scale here in America, you know, where we celebrate the miles in miles per gallon and not uh, the proper metric system that's used in the rest of the world. But won't get into that. I do know a customer here in San Diego did make labels or used to live here in San Diego and on eBay they sell a little label that goes on on the ring if you want miles per hour scale on outside. Um, not a deal breaker for me, but just want to make you aware of that. Um, the key, it's got a high security Sidewinder key, which is both a plus and a minus. This key does cost quite a bit to duplicate. I have all the machinery here to duplicate these keys. They do have an immobilizer chip in there. In addition to the key, it's got a key fob like most of the other Vespa products and many of the higher end Piaggio products. So you hold that little lock, you could walk up to the scooter, it pops the seat. Uh, the other one just flashes the lights, nothing that special. They call it the bike finder. Let's get under the seat. It's got a, quite a generous size seat. Um, if you're much taller than me, uh, I find that the, um, it's not the most comfortable thing, but it, the scooter fits me very well, is my thoughts on it, uh, the size. Very generous under seat bucket. This is where the uh, evaporative emission system is located. Um, some markets, they don't have that, so there's a little bit more space on some, some other markets of this scooter. It's got um, under seat light. And I don't really share the manuals, but you get an owner's manual in six different languages, along with um, a warranty manual, two-year warranty on these, as with all the Piaggio and Vespa products. Um, this is your master key. I don't recommend using this key, so essentially you just get one key. I'd recommend duplicating uh, your key and keeping the master in a safe, safe place. Uh, this is a little cover for the um, wind, windscreen. And last but not least, they do have factory color match top cases in two different sizes for this model. This is a lock tumbler that can go into the factory top case. So you have a single key for both the top case and ignition, which is a very nice feature. Something that they've never done on the Vespa GTS range. And what we've offered it as a service to um, rekey some of the locks on those cases so they work with your ignition key. But come on. We're 2020 here, nearly 2020. This is October 2019. Should, should be going on the way of no keys like most cars. But if you have one key, that's not too bad. A uh, little toolkit that's still included it includes a, a spark plug socket and a wrench to adjust the preload on the rear shocks. Batteries located underneath this cover. Uh, they do not include the seat 
seat cover, it is available as a separate part. Um, this whole uh, seat will lock, obviously, if you don't have access to the remote or you have the ignition in the lock position, you won't be able to use the button that's on the handlebars to open the seat so it locks down the compartment. Let's open up the glove box, push this guy in. Not the largest glove box, but you got like a little coin tray. Um, I find this useful. I cross the international border of Mexico quite a bit, so I'll put uh, my Century card, which is like a, a trusted traveler card in here because I don't want to be fumbling with my wallet. Uh, if you go through toll booths, maybe it'd be good to put change. And obviously a good place to hide your phone away, but keep in mind it does get a little warm in here. Up on the right side, as with all these newer models, they have the USB jack. The early uh, BV350s had a 12 volt um, jack, you know, for you know, plugging in a little air compressor or an adapter. This is your manual seat pop if your battery's dead. So again, the, uh, the glove box locks. You just push the key in the off or on position to open up the glove box. So once, once you lock the scooter down, you can no longer um, open the glove box or access the seat or easily wheel the scooter away. Um, it's got the famous luggage hook that's always been found on nearly all Vespa products and many, many of the Piaggio products. Something you just don't see on other brands of scooters. It's a very practical little thing. Say if you have the under seat full, top case full, and you need to put a grocery bag, a canvas bag, rucksack, backpack, whatever, purse, you can hook it right there and have extra space. Now on my personal BV350, I actually store this in a garage. I can care less about having a removable cap that locks on my gas. No one's gonna steal my three gallons of gas or put anything in uh, my fuel tank where I park it. In the European market ones, they have a real cool looking round racer style cap that does not lock from what I understand. I've seen pictures of it and seen them out in the streets when I've been in different parts of Europe where I've seen these scooters. Um, but that's pretty much the fuel and it locks away so no one can steal your gas if you're concerned with that. So onto the handlebar controls. It's got a passing light, high beam, low beam. Headlight doesn't come on until you start the scooter, preserve the battery. It got self-canceling, does not have self-canceling turn sails, but it has push to cancel turn signals. You know, operate pretty good. Here's the horn, just the basic beep beep horn. Um, I've always had a little bit louder horns in my own uh, BB350. Traction control, enable and disable button. By default, it's always on whenever you power up the scooter. Moving on to the right side, you have the emergency start stop switch, just to leave it and run all the time. The mode switch, a start button. You need to pull one, one of the two brakes to start the scooter. Comes right to life. Uh, nice fuel injected motor. They've had uh, a number of updates to the ECU over the years, so the, the fueling's quite good on these, these last ones. Sometimes the early ones would stall, or if you got an older one that's stalling, you may need to adjust your valves. That's um, kind of a telltale. Uh, back to the new bike here. You can see it does have a hump in the middle, which you may love or hate, but that's where the fuel tank is, is located. The scooter may be 395 pounds, but the weight is very low on it. So it does not have the, the feel of a 395 pound scooter. I'll ride this versus a Bergman 400 or the Majesty 400, which are similar scooters in the same class. Uh, this thing outperforms those two scooters uh, by a large margin. At the highway speeds, they're really, really close, but um, off the line, this thing just snaps it up. It's quick off the line, and that's what I like about this scooter. I like lane splitting up to the front and jumping ahead of the traffic. Um, perfect tool for that. It's quicker um, in the zero to 30 compared to even the HPE GTS, but the initial zero to 15, zero to 25, the HPE GTS 300 is a little quicker is what I've found. On the highway, it's no contest. This thing will accelerate no problem all the way up to its top speed, but comfortably cruises all day at 70 or 75 miles an hour. Anything faster, it's gonna wear you out. The motor's working hard. It's gonna consume a lot more fuel. So on the rear, it's got a pair of LED taillights. 
Uh, these are added for the American market, the turn signals. In Europe, this is a clear lens with LED taillights and incandescent turn signals integrated into body. It looks pretty sharp, but don't get that. But the cool thing we do get in the United States is lots of brake light. So you get a total of four lights that light up when you hit the brakes. Nice and bright, Work, works pretty well. Um, if you look, if you watch the video on Alex's personal BB350, I think we did it first service years ago on his um, 2014 BB350, I think he has in, in the gloss blue. He removed the rear rack and lopped off the rear fender. It's got quite a sporty look just with the rear without the rack. Obviously the rack uh, serves a practical function too. It takes the scooter off the center stand. Um, easier manu maneuver. It's got a side stand that has a safety interlock switch so it doesn't retract like some of the other Italian um, vehicles. Disc brake front and rear, of course, uh, with the ABS, uh, Continental ABS system. I could attest that uh, the ABS is smoother than my 2011 BMW Adventure bike. Like the ABS system is quicker to respond. You know, just when I've tested, I've never like was in a panic stop. I'm like, whoa, it's working better, it's saving my life or anything silly like that. But I just noticed you hit a bump or something and hit beyond the brakes hard, it just seems smoother than some of the older ABS systems. Same ABS system that's used in the GTS and the MP3, you know, so it's similar feel, real quiet. There's no noise or pulsation to the levers. Um, as with most modern scooters, got right levers your front brake, left levers your rear brake. They're not linked on this model. 2013 and 14 that did not have ABS had linked brakes and a larger brake caliper on the front. Um, so the the, they had link brakes where you pull the rear lever and you get about 30% up at the front in addition to all the rear. So uh, maybe that's a safety feature. I don't know. Some people love or hate it. These do not have link brakes. I just, if you need to do a panic stop, I'd just give it a handful on both the front and rear and keep the bike straight and you'd be safe and stop as fast as it can. Headlight. It's got like this kind of horizontal high low setup, you know, the, the, if I recall, I think, well, I don't remember which one's low or high, but uh, one comes on for low and one comes on for high. Not the best headlight. Uh, I would say the GTS has a better headlight, throws more light on um, my, my own BB350 at auxiliary lights. I have some customers that I've put lights on as well. Uh, it's got these nice looking running lights in Europe, they're turn signals not here in the United States. Turn signals are up on the handlebars. Uh, I tend to just to leave that alone, but you could convert them to the European uh, turn signals if you like. Um, overall, I mean, just the service intervals being pretty far between and being the perfect weapon for a commute on the highway. Can't go wrong with this bike or scooter per se. It's kind of like an automatic motorcycle in some ways, you know, similar performance to many of the um, 300 CC range motorcycles. There's a lot of them out there now, but you know, when I'm looking at the commute, I want something that's practical with lots of storage, which starts with a very generous size uh, bay underneath the seat, uh, including a top case on my own personal, um, BB350 plus the versatility to change wind, windscreens real easily. They have a pair of um, tubes that are under here for the larger windscreen. So you can do a factory windscreen, a FACO, a Givi. We have a couple different options on our e commerce website, scooterwest.com, uh, for this model. As for other accessories, not too much available. A couple performance parts, such as the Acropovic uh, muffler, a Melosi uh, varrier kit. There's a fuel controller. Uh, all those parts do make a noticeable increase in acceleration and a small dent to your fuel economy and noise, of course. Um, but I think they're, they're worth it if you're looking to squeeze out a little bit more performance. Nothing as far as like a big bore cylinder kit or a cam or anything. Uh, the reason they can get away with such long intervals, these have roller rockers on the, um, the four valves 
and they use shims. So it's not the easiest do-it-yourself kind of bike to work on or scooter to work on. If you watch my uh, servicing videos, if you're away from a dealer, um, you know, you can see you need some specialized tools. But I recommend if you're buying this new and if you don't buy it from us, support your local dealer. You know, you want those dealers to be in business. If, if they're not selling Piaggio products in the United States, it's not, what, what good is that going to do anybody? So just my little chime in. But I'm happy to help anybody that wants to uh, trick out their scooter or bring it to our own service center or watch our videos and order from our e-commerce site for service parts, scooterwest.com. So I hope that sums up my quick review of the BV350 and why I choose the scooter as my number one commuter. We've had, I don't know, quite a few employees of Vespa Motorsport have BV350s that either former employees or current employees. I think the number stands at seven. Seven people that worked here either have or have had a BV350. It's pretty good. Can't say that about any other Piaggio scooter. Um, BV500 is the predecessor to this bike. This thing outperforms, outperforms it, outhandles it, it's lighter and doesn't shake like a paint shaker like the BV500. Just want to chime in on what I thought. Hope you liked the video. This is Robot here from ScooterWest.com, your source for all things Vespa and Piaggio in North America, or our dealership, Vespa Motorsport. And give us a call at the dealership, 619-280-1718. Until next time, it's Robot here.